Welcome to the Guys with Issues. <laughs> yeah. uh, my name is James Mane. As always, I am with Russell Kialoha. Hello, everyone. Hey, hey, look at that. Things have changed, I guess, since we've podcasted last. Well, I think things have changed, but we eventually want to get sponsors. <laughs> yeah. This is true. So, um, you or you, if you know of anyone who wants to sponsor us, uh, let's, get, let's get this going. You know, we're... we're back we're podcasting we're full go this time yeah and this this, this today's episode may never see the light of day but one day yeah it may so this will be episode and then i'll fill in the blank later on <laughs> <Boop. laughs> <laughs> so there's like um cult fans of tv shows that i watch okay and then they create um instagram pages for that show but they can't say they're um the official instagram of that page of, of that official page of that show okay so they create other stuff like deleted scenes or um like um fan of so maybe this episode will pop up like after we've blown up world famous and they go hey I have an unreleased episode Ooh. of uh, boop. Uh, <laughs> this episode boop. Yeah, so here it is when you know when they rebooted and they started uh, podcasting again. So that'd be cool. I mean, we get that that following. Maybe either this fan or that fan are the two that's you know they like make a page and dedicate it to us. We're definitely trying out some new equipment as well, so. Yeah, we know we got, this might not work. You yeah, know? we'll so, find out if it works or not. Yeah, and in in our studio we we have a parking lot, so <laughs> 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 we like our fans to drive in and park and be comfortable. Uh huh. Hey, it's like a a drive-in live show. Pretty much. I mean, if you're listening, you could probably come down to this Waimalu coffee shop. Yeah, park. And, park and then come listen to us yeah. Yeah. but yeah. if you come down and we're not here it's probably because this episode aired, recorded uh last week or years ago <laughs> <laughs> yeah we got complete with um um interesting folks that like to stop by and let us know that they're here uh, yeah. so everyone who wants to know what, what have you been up to what have we been up to we've been where's up chad to Yes, where is Chad? That's going to be the question that everybody's going to ask. Chad is actually been really busy. Yeah, I guess we can say guy. that. I'm he's trying to guy. reveal too much because remember he was, you know, uh, the Colombian drug lord. Yes. Chad Santiago. Okay. So we can't, legally, we can't say too much. Yeah. We can't say he is consulting on a new Netflix series. <laughs> Yeah, Narco Darko or something yeah. like that. <laughs> or is it Darko Narco? But yeah, Chad is Chad is alive, ladies and gentlemen. The still. war on Wago. Yes. Where what where is Wago? <laughs> <laughs> where is Wago? Yeah. He hasn't been deported to actually he should be. He should go to Africa. He should deport him uh, back to Kaimuki. Kaimuki, no, <laughs> Africa. Remember his Last name is like royalty, right? In one of the African countries. That's right. I would guess Chad. Isn't there a country named Chad? Is that in Africa? Is it? I, I thought so. But that would be weird to have. <laughs> We're going to have to look that up. Chad. Yeah. I, I think, think he's royalty in the uh, Zamunda. Zamunda. He is the, he is the uh, sole heir to the throne of Zamunda. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking for my son, Chad. <laughs> <laughs> My son works. <laughs> yes, at the lawyer store. <laughs> yeah, so Chad is cool. Chad has been busy. Um, we're hoping to get him on, in the podcast here and there when he has time. Yep. Um, but actually, so he has also been away from stand-up comedy. Yes. He's taking a break. He's just so busy that it's, it's hard to get creative when your work is just... He has so much, you know, work. He's so much to do at work. So when you're in that business mind, it's hard to get that creative mind going. So, but when when he has a chance, of course, you know the 
I'm sure one of the fans, you know, like Chad. So we'll get him back on. Um, uh, let's see, myself, I'm, I am taking care of my parents who are elderly now um, and coaching high school football. Coach, yeah. put me in, coach. Yeah. I put know. I actually get that. I get that every game. Really? Yeah. The coaches, not not exactly like that, but the, the kids will come up and like. So, coach, are we gonna sub out the next uh, <laughs> series? <laughs> and like, so then I have to tell them, stop asking for playing time. Show me in practice that you want to play, and then I will, you know. Of course, because it's it's the JV level, so everybody should play because it's a development age so what do you call them they call you coach do you say they call me coach i well, call them by their name what did, oh you don't really they don't know excuse me player <laughs> i could but no nah, i call them by name otherwise or uh player. <laughs> player haters <laughs> but we have we have see that's something i'm learning like the the school that i'm uh coaching at has a lot of uh different commitment levels of players so there's the ones that are there every day work hard buy into you know coaches law whatever it says is law and then you have those that oh i can't make it to practice tomorrow uh because i'm going to a birthday party and it's like it's football season man you know right. it's like and then come game day oh can i play I had a kid who missed three practices and in then, one week. And then I said, they could play? Yeah. So he was sick. Okay. So I understand. I told him, I said, oh, um, you know, that's understandable. You, you get sick, especially at that age. I mean, they're around other kids in school. You know, the germs pass around really fast. So he's, he's sick three days, fine. And then the day before the game at practice, he goes, oh, um, so I'm here today. Will I get playing time tomorrow? Mm -hmm. And I said, no. <laughs> you will not. I mean, it's not fair to the other kids that come to practice. Right. Plus, it also sets the the precedent that your ass, your ass has to be in practice. You know, you gotta you gotta show up. You gotta show your commitment, and then you get rewarded with playing time. Right. Um, I coach the offensive line, so we do have a lot, like a lot of kids that not fond of sprints or conditioning. So then well, I thought was that just came with being part of the O line. Well, we shouldn't uh, run farther than five yards. <laughs> well, that's true, but you still got to be able to last the whole game. <laughs> but at five yards at a time. <laughs> but, yeah, so, like, a lot of them will, will skate or, oh, my leg, I go to the trainer. Mm -hmm. It's like, come on, man. It's like, I, I ain't going to lie. But when I reflect back to my, my days, I was kind of a, I was kind of a, what did Chrissy Teigen call the president? A P A B. <laughs> Oh, 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 I was like, what did she do? And I remember the, yeah, I remember yes. the tweet. All right. You guys Google it. Yeah. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not trying to stay away from the cussing on here. Yeah. But, yeah, I don't, I don't want to. I, I look back and I'm like, yeah, there were some things I did that was like. Mm, I, I, Teenager. Yeah, yeah. Teenagers yeah. always, you know, and, and I get that. So, to me, I, the coach's uh, job is to try to motivate, you know. So, that's, it's funny because that's the approach I want to take. I want to motivate. I want to help develop. Um, I want to be a mentor, but then just one thing, and you just lose your shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's so, times where I've snapped. Like what? What did you do? I just, I just snapped. Get like as loud as possible. Get your ass out of here, you know. And just like I don't normally talk like that, or especially yeah. to kids. You know, I mean, these aren't kids; they're teenagers. Right. But you know what I mean? They're like, coach, it's the bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> I don't care. I got to go. <laughs> Get your ass. Put your wipe it. Wipe it. Get out. Get out the poo poo yeah. needs to come out. And as I sit down, I don't hear the water. I say, wash your damn hands. <laughs> yes, I'm the coach of the bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> when you go home, wash your ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's funny the excuses you get. I mean, I, like I said, like or like you said that we were at the age we both played high school football and we, I remember coming coming up with tons of excuses of why not to do things. Right. But it's funny when these kids tell me these things and I'm like, man, I know all this stuff. Already. I know this game. I I've been there. 
I wrote this playbook, kid. Yeah, yeah. He's <laughs> like, come on, man. I, I, but in my days, there was no high school athletic trainer or, right. you know, where you get hurt. It was basically the coach saying, get your ass up. Tape it. Tape it. <laughs> yeah. Everything was tape. Tape yeah. it up. Tape yeah. it up. Walk it off. Walk it off. Tape it up. Walk it off. But now that you're coaching kids, because like, like now you hear about, like, this generation of kids are all soft. They have, you know, every... They've been coddled too much. Do you see that? Or do you just see teenagers? Like how when, when, when you were back in the day. I have said that. Um, man, this generation. I, I, I caught myself <laughs> saying that. And then I remember my coaches saying that about my generation. And I'm pretty sure it, you know. It, it's just a thing you say that after 40. <laughs> yes, I think so. I mean, you just look and you're like, you just compare it to your days. I mean, and a lot of the coaches do that. Every one coach, he, coach um, he brings it up all the time. In my days, if we didn't come to practice, or if we was late to practice, we would be running the hills. You know, right. you, you guys just one lap, you know. I mean, I think with, with um, when we learn more about the science of, of an athlete, you know, being an athlete and what, um, like, in my days, they say if you want to be able to run faster, train running downhill and then maybe like 10 years later we find out that's the worst thing you could do on your knees right. because of the pounding um that's or, what she said yeah okay <laughs> hey, and that out of my system let's go <laughs> and, then, and then um even with <laughs> even with um um uh what is it um just the training everything is different so we would get into lines and sit there and stretch out you know team stretch now they don't do that it's, really it's not static where we sit there and stretch our muscles is dynamic where they're walking and stretching okay so it's like um they do stretch the muscles it's just that they're doing it differently where you get blood flow mm -hmm. so it's like no like high knees and well similar but they also do like they walk and stretch they walk and stretch. So, like, um, there's one where you walk and then you reach down and then you're, um, you reach down towards your ankle and then it's not prison term way, but, you know, it, but you basically <laughs> stretch your hands. Yeah. <laughs> Grab your ankle, son. It's <laughs> time for some dynamic stretching. I'm going to stretch the dynamic out of you. <laughs> we try to keep it clean, but it always goes there. But... <laughs> So that's a, that's so it's, everything has changed. So I think even with technology, everything is easier. So like we never had Google in high school. All right. Whenever something we needed to know something, we it was either you didn't <coughs> know it today, or you had to go look it up in the encyclopedia or ask somebody who did know. Right. And I think with this generation, everything is at the tip of their hand. They can find instant out. gratification. Instant. So like with that, I think it's. They don't have to work hard to find things. So a lot of things that they get, they didn't have to work hard for. That's true. Okay. And I, I think that. for us, our generation, you know, rewind back to the, the 90s when we were in high school, it was, um, um, it was easy. What we were going through was easier than what our parents went through, where, you know, I guess in their days, they didn't have pagers us we had pagers you know them they didn't have pagers they they didn't really see their friends often like we did you know because right. they was always doing something i guess i don't even know what to compare it to but it was always easier the next generation so yeah it's like maybe my dad looks at me and is like you don't know what it's like to climb a tree and get food you know you guys have drive through you know what i mean so you guys are soft but I've Googled it, Dad. Yeah. <laughs> Put up a YouTube video. Yeah. See, that's what I, that's what I see. It's like, the, so these kids have it easier than I had it, but I shouldn't take it out on these kids for that. Okay. But I, I okay, so now I'm saying these things because it's the right thing to say. Right. But when you actually get there and you do think of like, man, you guys got it easy. You guys are soft. Your generation's soft. But it, it's just, you know, that's the, what they're brought up in. It's easier than what I went through, and I'm mad at them for having it easier than I, I guess. I'm guessing. Wow. Uh, okay. Yeah. 
So I do I, um, try to remember to connect to the kids because if they're not interested in it, they're not going to want to do it. How do you try and connect? Here you go. Excuse me, player. BTS? BTS? OMG, guys. OMG. <laughs> <laughs> I assimilate oh, and I try to sound like they do. Like, seriously? <laughs> really? Yeah. That, that is so LOL, guys. Uh, hit me up on the DM. <laughs> Can you slip into my DM yeah. story? Oh, my IG story. I don't know what to say. I mean, but no, the, the, the kids connect on um, when they, they know when somebody cares or, or doesn't. There's like some coaches that they don't really talk to because the, the, the coach is always snapping at them. And I see it now. Like I'm watching it. Like some coaches seem like they had a bad day at work or at home. And brought it to work. And brought just, it to the field. Yep. Brought it to practice and just... And he's yelling at them for, like, the littlest things. And you don't see it until you see the other days when they're in, good mo they're in a good mood. Where their snapping is not as harsh. Mm. It's like, man, you're yelling at me because I, I, I drank all... Or, I, you know, I, I messed up on a play that we just learned five minutes ago. Huh. When normally you wouldn't, you know. It's like... And I, so I see it as a... Oh. I guess because it's my first year, so I'm watching the coaches too, trying to learn. Maybe he was, when the guy was working on the play, that's when he got, found his wife, you know, with oh. the mailman or something. Wow. While he was writing that play. <laughs> so, oh, no wonder. It sort of resonates now. Like, no wonder the, 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 the RPO play is called um, Slutty Ass Wife. <laughs> <laughs> slutty Slant to the Left. Slutty Slant to the Left. That sounds racist as hell, dude. <laughs> Anyway, that's it. That's not really chat here. We need the lawyer here to let us know when we've gone too far. Yes. <clears throat> but yeah, I mean, it's it's interesting because I'm, I was expecting to be, this being my first year, to just be a fly on the wall and absorb as much as I can, uh, which I am. But then I got thrown into, hey, go coach this group. They need a coach. You play this position. Go ahead and see what you can teach them. But even at that, football has changed. Everything is not... You know, not the same. Uh, the blocking schemes, the blocking techniques. Whereas uh, our days was go get that right, that linebacker right now, mm -hmm. go get him. Whereas now it's like you have time to get to the next level, so you don't really need to fire out like how we did. Where everything was like a sprint, where you can the technique where you don't really have to come off low anymore. You can come off high and then just grab with your hands and push. And even tackling is different. Because of the concussion, it's more of a, you wrap your arm around the waist and then you kind of alligate a roll. Yeah, yeah, you lean to the side. Yeah, and then because when they were teaching him... Like a schoolboy roll-up in wrestling. Yeah. yeah. So it was like um, when, you, when they teach them, the head is no longer in front of them. So when, before it was when you made the tackle, Keep your right. helmet is yeah. in front. The numbers. Yeah, now it's, you, you put your helmet behind them yeah. because you don't want to get that concussion. When you roll them up. Pull the tights. Yeah. <laughs> and then you pin them. You pin them. I, I, I hope one day I see that. <laughs> and the, so the way I got dragged into the coaching was my daughter, really. She's yes. uh, Yeah, she's a kicker for the, the varsity football team. She wanted to do it. I kept telling her. So I told her no because I didn't want her to get hurt. It wasn't. It was a no that I don't give her my bless. It was a no that I don't give her my blessing. But it wasn't a no. You don't do it, because I told her, you know, you're a junior in high school now. You make your own decisions um, right, right. about what you want to do in the future. So, don't let me stop you. All right. But she's actually doing pretty good, and you know, I, I still tell her like, I wish she didn't. But I'm glad that she stood up to me and said she's gonna do it, because then that shows that she really wanted to do it. So. The thing that sucks is that she might not want to play soccer anymore, but she's been playing since she was six. Oh, well, at least she, at least she's doing something she wants to do. Yeah, yeah. So that's good. And volleyball, the... and she's doing volleyball yeah. primarily, and then football, which um, her one of her videos where she kicked uh, fifty yard warm ups uh, has gone, I guess, semi viral like, or mini viral, mini viral, like twenty, almost thirty thousand views. Oh wow! Yeah, so I was like. A little bit, a uh, little bit jealous being in the show business, and <laughs> it's like, man, add up all my views, and it's still less than, her, way less than her view. 
but oh, she didn't kick in a ball. I know, and it was windy that day, and it was yeah. behind her. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so I invented the piano key nectar. <laughs> 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 what do you know? <laughs> yes, and then I, um, hopefully, I mean, she does well. We'll see because. I, uh, I think the, the the Hawaii state record for female kickers is 44, and the the national record is 48. National record 48. So she just has to kick it. Oh, in for the game. women, for for, for females. Yep, in okay. high school. So she just has to kick it in the game. Right. And um, you you have seen that she can hit that distance. Yeah, yeah. So she has, and then she's in her first year, and she's a junior, so she'll be kicking it next year. Unfortunately, the issue with. Um, that is, she plays on a team that does not score a lot, uh -huh. <laughs> or has up scoring opportunities. Too bad, too bad you can transfer her to St. Louis. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. She break tons of records, all the PATs alone. <laughs> I think if she was a kicker at the St. Louis, uh, St. Louis football team, or even Milani football team, she would um, she would get more PATs than her current school has. Yeah. You know, points. Period. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I mean, it is what it is, but next year should be good. Mm -hmm. Next year, hopefully she gets the opportunity. But, yeah, I mean, that's what I've been up to. Still doing comedy here and there, just taking a break because of the football kids. Mm -hmm. Oh, which, another thing, real quick, I'm, I'm rambling on, but it's funny because the kids that, they can't handle um, truth. Truth or criticism? True criticism? Like, that's... <laughs> Oh yeah, okay. Right, you know, I, mean, I guess like they can't handle like so like, if they ask, oh, um, if they want evaluation, so that they know what to work on, and I tell them you're slow, and they're like, oh damn, coach, why? I was like, I didn't make you slow. You slow, <laughs> you know. I mean, what do you want me to do? Lie to you, and then you don't know what you you're you going around and you know just just thinking you're fast, but you're really slow. Is it the brutal truth they can't handle? Yes, the brutal yes, truth. The brutal, they can't. Like it, it, that it's so true. But not packaged in a nice way that it's hurtful. Yes, that is Don't exactly. Don't hurt my feelings. Yes, that's what. They're, and then even um, so like I, I, I tell a kid and he'll be talking trash and like he's the man and he's the shit and whatever. And I was like, dude, you don't even play. <laughs> <laughs> and they go, oh damn, coach, why? I was like, well, if you look at the stats, you're not there. And <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not telling you something that's not happening. I'm being honest. And then he was like, yeah, but why you gotta say it like that? I was like. How do you want me to say it in French? <laughs> you know, like, what you, you want me to candy coat that for you? It's like, it's the truth. You don't play, but you're talking like you're the shit. Yeah. And then, you know, so tone it down, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, a lot of them are like, uh, and the other thing, okay, so I'm sorry, I'm going. The other thing that I noticed too is like, so social media generation, I say. So the coach is talking in your days. Was that Coach Geisen? No, oh. Sousa. Sousa. Okay, so when Coach Sousa talks, and same for me and Coach Say or whatever was talking, you shut your mouth, right? Right. And you listen. Right. The only thing you say is when he asks a question, yes or no question, yes, Coach. Yes, Coach. No, Coach. And no. that's it. This generation, I guess, because they're used to commenting on posts, they talk all the time. So, like, yeah, Coach, I agree. And I was like, what? I know. It's like, too much yappy. Quiet down. And then it's like, like a, oh, I know. Yeah, coach. That's hilarious, coach. I was I was talking about that yesterday. It's like, no, man. Quiet down. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's, it's so it's weird. I, and that's something I noticed that these kids will will comment. And I'm like, so I tell them, like, hey, this is not IG, IG stories or, or IG live where you guys can just spit up whatever you guys is in your head. No. You just gotta have a filter. Shut your mouth. <laughs> And then you go again, and then same thing. It's like, damn it, shut up. And then that's when I lose it, I guess. Get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> You're blocked. You are blocked. You're, You're blocked. Bl Turn comments off. <laughs> <laughs> comments have been disabled. Yes. Yeah, it's so weird. It's like they have to say it. Like it they can't hold it in. It's so weird. But, yeah, that's what I've been up to. How about yourself, sir? Uh... I know it's, it's super generic, but just work. And I think I had sex like one more time, but I had another kid. So. That's the uh, sex receipt. Yes. Yeah. 
two times. Evidence, at least two times. At least. At least. Yeah. So I, it's been a long time for me because my receipt's 16 years old. <laughs> <laughs> at least yours is more recent. Because <laughs> I don't have young kids, I have recent receipts. <laughs> <laughs> My receipt is old, man. Uh, it's barely have any ink left on it. <laughs> no way, dude. That's huge. Dude. And, he, and he is huge. Another boy. So two He's, boys. So the younger one's going to be bigger than the... I think so. No, uh, the younger one's going to be the lineman. Oh, sweet. Maybe I'll still be coaching then. Yeah. And be like, you got it easy. <laughs> I know because I watched you grow up. <laughs> I watched your ass. <laughs> well, you've been getting in shape, though, have not I do see a difference in your face. That's yeah. usually the first place you see it. Your face looks slimmer. It's funny. You're the only one who says that, and every time you say it, it, it just sounds weird to me. What? I don't know. Oh, I see in your face, son. <laughs> I'll be watching your face. <laughs> that lets you know I'm not checking out your body. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm not in this for your, for your body, man. I'm looking at your face. I, th- I think it's because I use the term your face when I want to, like, when people say dumb stuff to me. Or somebody asks me, hey, do you want a burrito? And I'm like, your face is a burrito. <laughs> <laughs> See? So that's what you say. You're working out. Like, your face is working out. <laughs> <laughs> I-, I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess everything melts downwards. So when you sweat, it comes from up here. And then is that everything. what happens, you think? I, I don't know. And the heat travels upwards, so your your face gets the most heat, so it sweats the most. I mean, the way you explain it, it makes sense. <laughs> but I don't know. Think I don't think that's how it works. That's my coaching strategy. I, the way I say it, it sounds like it makes sense, but it really doesn't. There's no science behind anything I tell you. <laughs> Just listen to what I say. It's basically like a religion. It's like whatever I say, it's like man, that sounds right. Well, you can't prove anything, sir. <laughs> <laughs> so I've been doing um, this. It's called the 75 Heart Challenge. You guys can look it up. All two of you who are listening to this. Yeah. You and you. Yeah. So for 75 days, uh, you got to do five things. I always forget these five things. So let me go real quick. Uh, you got to read a nonfiction book. Ten pages every day. That's one. You have to have a diet. Any diet. As long as it's a strict diet. Uh, you drink a gallon of water. Progress pictures every day. And you have to work out twice a day, 45 minutes. One of them has to be outside. Oh. And you have to do it for 75 days. Oh, no wonder you post a lot of the... That's what I was wondering. I was like, man, he's posting a lot now. It's because of that. Yeah. Because you usually don't post that many. No, I'm just posting progress pics in, like... And Updates. I do see you um, posting stuff where you're walking outside. Yeah. Which is cool because you get to take your kids outside too. Yeah. Like it keeps you me accountable. So I'm like, okay, this is what this is what's happening. To kind of take notes on the day. Mm-hmm. And then on the IG, the community for uh, 75 Heart is really good. Oh, you know, supportive. They're, yeah, they're very supportive, very helpful, <clears throat> uh, encouraging. People, some of them have slipped into my DMs. Oh. oh. In your slip into your DM, your face. <laughs> oh, your face is a your DM slip in. Face is a DM I slip into. <laughs> but yeah, and, uh, they've been real supportive, um, kind of encouraging me. Uh, starting to see some results, so that's good. And I have about what forty something more days as of this recording. So seventy five days. Then I'm on to eat fucking pie, <laughs> yeah. ice cream. For like three days, I think. And then go right back to yeah, uh, 75, another 75-day 75 challenge. Uh, it's actually another 30-day challenge. So it's a next, there's like different levels of this challenge. Oh. Oh, so. That, so like the, it'll be, hopefully it doesn't happen. Then you lose all the weight yeah. that you've lost already. All right. <clears throat> and in the three days that you took off, <laughs> <laughs> you gain more than. I hope not. That's good. It's actually a really good challenge. I think uh, that I just needed some direction about 30-something days ago before I went on vacation. You know, I kind of was at a weird standstill crossroad of what I wanted to do in my mm-hmm. life. So this is a nice start getting things in the right direction. So it's not, a, it's not exactly, a, it's not a, it's supposed to be a physical challenge. It's more of a mental challenge. It seems that because the product is that 
Yeah, well, you'll get it. If you do it right, you'll get in shape. Well, also with like um, just um, was like discipline itself. I mean, yeah, dis- getting my head, getting my head right, and being disciplined is freaking huge, man. Like uh-huh. my mind knows how to trick me out of shit, but it's been really good so far. So, what, what isn't it like a certain amount of? Is it like thirty days if you do everything? If you do something for thirty days, it becomes. They say it becomes a habit, right? But I figure out. Uh, Maybe 75 days should do it. <laughs> should turn things into a habit. There, there, there were some, there are some things, like, especially like the dieting portion, that I never thought it would last this long. Wow. I'm doing. Um, I have some other people with that. I, I have one other person I'm doing the challenge with. So we've both been encouraging each other, and she's been doing a great job. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know, she's been dealing with a lot, a lot of struggles, and it's but she's been pushing past it. And it's, and amazing so it keeps me going yeah I think it'll be difficult for me um, that, like you said the diet part that's probably going to be the, and it's you just put a barrier right there well what beats is I've, I'm learning about myself what beats hunger for me is laziness I'm more lazy than I am hungry so like um, I remember times where you went on um, where you've done a 24 hour fast I've done that not because um, the the fasting part is because I was too lazy to get out of bed, and this day nobody bothered me, and I just stayed in bed. And that was just a nice way of saying I was fasting. Yeah, so I was like, "Wow, I didn't eat for twenty four hours. I fasted. <laughs> <laughs> I did it. I did. It's time success. to go make it up." <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Believe that. I did uh, first and second lunch after that. <laughs> but yeah, I was just tripping out. And, and, so I've been fasting for... Oh, even with this? That is the diet I'm doing. Oh, I'm cool. doing 16-hour fast with an 8-hour eating window. Past couple of days, I went 20 hours with a 4-hour eating window. But if you're lifting weights, it doesn't really work for me. If, if I'm just walking and running, mm-hmm. I can do it. But 8-hour um, window, I, have, I can build up enough energy. And then I can, I can push through it. But 4-hour oh. is a little rough. Also... Yeah, um, four hours. I can't. Eat, I can't eat, really eat with my family. Oh, the window. Yeah, it's and important. Time you know, with them. share a meal with your family. <clears throat> yeah, I agree. I agree. So, yeah, a four-hour window. I couldn't do anything. So, I uh, dropped it back down to eight, so I could uh, hang out with them. Oh, it's important. I think now, I think, you know, hanging out with my family is important to me. No, it wasn't. It wasn't that it wasn't back then? I was gonna say now. It's just more. <laughs> <laughs> so before it was like. Ah, uh, you're just a bunch of babies. Yeah. You're right. soft. I know. <laughs> you got it easy. You get carried around. When I was your age, I was walking. I was walking already. <laughs> I had two jobs. <laughs> I was nice on in Jamaican. Hey. Hey, hey man. man. When I was your age, I had two jobs. Uh, two jobs and on the bobsled team. <laughs> Hear me now. <laughs> Bumba clot, rude boy. No, that's, that's good, man. I commend you for that. I follow your... Instagram and I see your progress. I'm like, damn. Oh, at Big R K on Instagram. A R E K A Y. It took you know it's funny. It took me a while to figure out. Like when when you changed it, I didn't get it that it was R K your initials. Yes. I just thought it was like R K. Okay, whatever. R K. No, I knew it said R K, but I didn't realize your initials until maybe recent. Like. I was like, oh, R.K. Russell Kealoha. <laughs> yeah. So even though I write jokes for a living, I, I catch on slow. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, you can follow me on there, on Instagram. So, and, then, and slip into his DM, your yes. face. Slip your face in my DM. Oh, oh nice. Um, getting back to football season. It is NFL season started. College football season has started. Yes. Make your, let's make our quick predictions. College football. For national championships? Yes. Or, whoa, that's going to be, I think it's going to be. I think it's going to be Clemson, Alabama again? I don't know. Alabama's defense isn't as strong as they were last year. And last year when they faced Clemson, they got destroyed. So, the offense is stronger, though. If it is, it's going to be a shootout. Clemson, I don't know. Maybe they might slip up somewhere. They kind of lost a lot of players to the draft. Yeah. The quarterback is there, and, you know, I guess 
it's tough to say before the season. Mid-season, I would probably have a better prediction. Mm. Well, we'll come back to that. Obviously. Then. But, yeah, I would, I'm going to... Preseason, I'm going to say Alabama. Okay. Because they got revenge on the mind, too. Yeah. And they have, like... The re- they probably have the best receiving core in the nation. I'm going to go out on a limb. <clears throat> Notre Dame. This year. Notre Dame. Notre Dame. Interesting. Year. All right. What about NFL? <clears throat> NFL. Yikes. I'm going to go... Well, actually, no. I guess because I always think Hart first, and Hart is always 49ers, but I don't think they're going to do it. I think it's going to be the Patriots, and it's not because of Tom Brady this time. It's going to be because of their defense. I'm hearing their defense is pretty good. Their DBs are amazing. Yeah. They blanket. Uh, they The Steelers couldn't do anything. Um, I don't know. Like Again, it's, it's hard to say just off of the first game or even preseason uh, predictions, but because we don't get to see... Like the the expert an, analysts or analysts, uh, they get to see the practices where we don't. So going off to the first game, I think, I think Patriots, man. Do you think Belichick is goat? Yes or no? I have to say yes because that proof is in the pudding. I mean, the the guy has what, six rings. Six rings, going for seven. Yeah, I mean, and he still has his. His program, team, club, whatever is on lockdown. Yeah. I mean, he loses players, new players come in, and they just fit fit right in. Like I, I honestly believe if maybe Bill Walsh had longer time at the Niners, oh, yeah, probably would have been similar. And you know, Brady's not even one of the highest paid quarterbacks. Right? Yeah, but that's that's Belichick right there. So Kraft is lucky. That could have happened at the Browns. How about that? Yeah. <clears throat> So, and my, I don't like Brady, but I will, I will admit that he is he is goat right now. He is a goat. I gotta agree with you, even though I'm a I don't like him. I'm a goat. Montana guy. Even I, I mean, the guy is doing it. The guy's forty something, yeah. and he won. He he's made comebacks in Super Bowls. And he won, you know. Yeah. Um, and you know what it is? I I think it's some guys when they're down, then they 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 try to hit the home run. It's like no, just. Play sound small ball. And he got Check dad bod. He got dad bod? He's not he's he's not as ripped as the Well people yeah, make, yeah. Know? He's in his forties. Yeah, you see you see him without a shirt, you're like, okay. He, he looks like, you know, Chad. Not, not something you would find on my search engine, but yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> looking up Tom Brady's bod. Yeah. Look look it up in incognito mode. Well because and then that goes to show that it's ninety percent mental, see? So that because that's what it is. He, a majority of his stuff. I'm sure if they do the stats, whatever. A lot of his things is check down, mm-hmm. check down passes, and I think that's what it is. Football is not um, a fast game in strategy wise, where you have to chip away at it as the game goes on. Sure, you'll get a touchdown here and there, a field goal here and there, but. Check down, check down, check down, and then eventually, um, you know, you send it down because you got the defense sucked in. I think they got a good culture there, mm. so I think man, it's a winning, winning culture. Yeah. I, I don't like them at all, but they're doing something right. Go Raiders, go Raiders. Raiders versus Rams, Super Bowl. Raiders versus Rams. I'm sorry, I gotta go with the Rams. <laughs> Well, I mean, they're the defending NFC champs. I mean, we'll see what happens. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's right. UH? Oh, UH got a wake-up call yesterday. Oh, yeah. Washington said, hey, you beat up two Pac-12 teams. Thank you for being at the two bottom of the 12. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're better than them, right? Thank and you for beating 11 and 12. <laughs> yeah. Plus, they're playing away. I mean, Hawaii's yeah. always struggled playing away. And are they the number one in the Pac-12? You dub? I think it's. I think they are because Oregon had a um, a loss. Yeah. No, you dub has a loss too. Oh, they did. Oregon they, lost. I think USC is right. USC lost to BYU. Oh, they lost yesterday. Yeah. Oh, wow. I watched it. It was tied all the way, yeah. and then I stopped. I had they to lost. Go, had to go this do this thing for my and daughter's then, team. And then all the Mormons charged the field like like. Like they're reenacting the taking of Utah. <laughs> taking of Utah. So they got all the Native Americans out of there and they claimed it. 
They claimed it for their 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 Lord that was born two days ago before they stormed Utah. Sorry, Mormons. Yeah, we're just joking. Yeah, we're, I'm just joking. It is a real religion. No, it is. It is. <laughs> John Smith. <laughs> but no, I mean, oh, I didn't know that they pulled it off. That's good. Yep. You sleep on a team, and that team beats you. Anything can happen, man. So it looks like UH is going to get a new, a new Aloha Stadium. I, I don't know about the plans, though, for it. I think... But you see, like, the whole, there's going to be a hotel. Why is there a hotel in Why? Halava? I know. Why? In Halava, right? <laughs> <laughs> so they definitely have to switch location. I mean, put him a ho you know, hotel in Halava, that's, that's getting robbed every other day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and then I'm gonna, we'll post a link somewhere, but if you see the designs for the new Alo Stadium, I think it's supposed to be like shops and a hotel. They're trying to, I guess, gentrify, make money, yeah, yeah. off of the, the the stadium when nobody's there. Uh, you know, there's some. I feel like there's some places that just shouldn't be gentrified, and Halava, I think, is one of them. Yeah. So it's like you're in their hotel, and then um, you know like how they put um, um, uh, ocean view, <laughs> <laughs> housing view. <laughs> You get to see where uh, housing view, <laughs> <laughs> the housing view, or and because there is no view really at, wow. at that stadium. I mean, where are you going to look at uh, the ships and Pearl Harbor, the Arizona Memorial, or Crips gang banging? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like it's a, what are those? Uh, there's SOS out in the harbor. You know, like uh, emergency. And the SOS Sons of Samoa <laughs> Crip Gang over there on the other side. So which view are you paying which view for? Do you want? I know. So like, if you get the Pearl Harbor Ocean View, yeah. it's like two hundred dollars more. <laughs> but for like, they pay you fifty bucks <laughs> to take the Crip View. <laughs> so, like, oh, on your side of the hotel, you will you can hang. Oh, well, their bar is like actually outside in a in a in a, in a cul de sac or a dead end. And it's just a, a, a gang just there with 40s, and you just go, and like, hey, guys. Uh, they pay you to stay over there. Yeah. <laughs> and they got some hidden hotel costs where you, where you get robbed. <laughs> Is there any stadiums that have hotels? I'm sure there are like, maybe hotels nearby. That's what I mean. No, what, what, but how do you have a... I mean, that'd be uh, convenient. if you, Let's say you go to the Raiders um, uh, Stadium in Vegas. Right. And then you watch the game and you stay there too. That'd be really cool, I guess, for a, a fan. But Hawaii has no pro team. It's true. Well, the college team is the pro team. But they don't... And then Halava is not near the campus. That is true. So you don't get the real experience because the team's never around. Right. Because they don't even practice there. They probably should have put one more out west. You know, we need another school here. Like Hawaii State? Like... Hawaii Tech. Ooh, Hawaii Ooh. Tech. Yeah. Hawaii Tech University. With I a would, football team. I would be into that. Because then... A private school. Private college school. Yeah, yeah, because then uh, the, the UH is state, yeah. Yeah. That would be cool. Yeah, I'd be right Who would you cheer for? Hawaii Tech? Huh? We I'm should a, create it. Starting the Kickstarter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, the GoFundMe is coming up soon, guys. So we're going to create our own university. HTU. HTU. Or, wait, uh, UHT? No. Mm -hmm. UTI? UTI. Oh, no. <laughs> um, I'm going to come up with our own school name. Uh, what would our, um, would our mascot be? Yeah, our nickname. Uh, I don't know. I'd have to think about that. Something that has to do with, um, uh, I guess, something current. Like, we can't do, like, lions, tigers. They don't have that in Hawaii. You know? If you guys if you guys have any uh, suggestions, all two of you listening to this, yeah, let us know. Hit us up. Yeah. We want to know your ideas. Hawaii Tech U. Yeah. Um, so that's it for a little stadium, right? I think it's, uh, yeah. I mean, I mean they, they got to rebuild it. I think they should, they should build it on the campus or near the campus so that you get the students to come out. It's not they can just room. walk over. Huh? Uh, rail. That's just the rail. Mm, move it over, or, or not the rail, but find some place uh, near the campus. Make it smaller, a thirty-five thousand. Um, don't make it like uh, how the Aloha Stadium is. It's a lot of sp space not being used, like the right. corners. Make it like just <clears throat> just the end, the, the sidelines, and then maybe like a U shape, you know. But 
I think it's a big mistake to put it to keep it here and then add a freaking hotel. Mm-hmm. No tell hotel no. of Halava. Yeah. Oh, Halava Hotel. Halava Hilton. Yeah, Hilton Halava. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you who live in the mainland, uh, how, how do you best describe Halava? It's the uh, Watts of Hawaii. <laughs> I mean, because it's. Watts is all low rise, right? I mean, you can't say like Marcy. Right, right. Or, you know, because those are like the. I guess that would be like KPT. So I would say it's the Watts of, of Hawaii. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> all right, well, I guess that's it. Yeah. That's a wrap this week. This is the episode. Boop. And you've been Wait, blessed. Uh, yeah. You've been blessed to listen to it. And then, um, you know, one thing uh, cool about working with, I guess, one of my concerns with working with the youth is um, bullying. Yes. So I, I, I do talk to the kids. Uh, they, they, IL High School, where I'm coaching, does have a program called Boys to Men. A, B, C, B, B, D. Not that mm-hmm. Boys to Men. <laughs> <laughs> Not that Boys to Men. But, yeah. Um, so, basically, it's it's geared towards teaching the kids, the boys. We have one of our fans. Like, hey! So, <laughs> Machete. Uh, somebody's bullying our, our uh, audio. There you go. There you go. So, like, um, um, it's geared towards teaching the young men. And this is, I guess, created when there's mostly just boys playing football. Um, teaching them about treating girls and women with respect um, trying to put a stop again uh, to domestic violence Harassment. or spousal abuse right, right. well maybe because like with, with what's coming on the, you know with the nfl football players where they're hitting their wives right you know so it's, it that was that's how this started was to try to teach them at a young age in in high school to respect women um yeah and and then um understand that that's not right Right, and it's weird because it seems like you ha- you have to be explicit. You have to say, "Do not do this," because then maybe they think in their own mind that that's normal. And you know, then <sighs> another thing that I talk to the kids about is you know not picking on um, on kids, especially at the teenage level. I mean, it's they're very impressionable. Where right, the worst thing uh, you know is a kid taking their own life, which I know last year. It didn't have to do with bullying, but, you know, the kid took his life in another school, and it affected everybody. Like, and then the kids in our school. It was a rival school, but the kids in our school, it affected them. And, you know, that's a, hopefully that, you know, if we can save one life with our message, right? you know, then it's want. worth it. Yeah, it's worth, worth it. it. But, yeah, if you see somebody out there and, you know, just say hello. Even something that simple, just, hey, how are you doing? Or, if you Hi. see somebody get bullied, step in and... Say something or yeah. tell somebody. Yeah, and then what we tell um, the the boys at um, Boys to Men is tell an adult. Oh, tell you're, somebody. You're at a school. Tell a teacher. Tell yeah. a. It's okay to tell when it's coming. When it's this. You're not a snitch. Yeah, you're helping that you're, person. You're saving somebody's life. Yeah. If you look at that perspective of uh, that person, what they're going through, you're helping that person. Right. Don't look at the bully's perspective and say, "Oh, I don't want that person to think I'm a snitch." No. Help that person, you know. We all share the earth, you know. We're all family in um, in this in the, in the greater scheme of things. And help out, say hello, smile. And then those of you who are listening that need a friend, hit us up. Zip into our DM. Yes. So again, your face is a DM. All right. And that's what you hit us up with. You hit us up on, on our Instagram and you say your face is a DM, and then we'll have a conversation. <laughs> we'll be friends. And then, as always, uh, thank you guys for listening to the episode. Uh, My name is James Mane. As always, I am with Russell Kealoha. Goodbye, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for listening to the podcast. God bless you and good night.